Welcome to another multivariable calculus screencast. Today we're going to talk about parametrizing surfaces. Let's talk about what that means really quick before we dive into uh, examples. So what we're really looking for, or what we're talking about when we talk about a parametrized surface, um, is really just a function, right? But now the input's going to be two parameters, u and v. You can think of that as a 2D vector if you like. Uh, and the output is a three-dimensional vector, which we'll typically consider to be a position um, vector. So these are analogous to parametrized curves where one parameter goes in and a position vector in 3D space comes out. But now we've got two parameters go in um, and a position vector comes out for each one of those. So if x, y, and z are to have some regularities here, differentiable or at least continuous, what's really, and I like the picture going on here, is that we're taking a part of 2D space, what I'll call like UV space here. We'll take a subregion of that. So typically we cut off u and v with some parameters or even functions. And then what R does is it maps it over, right? For each one of those points on that region, this function R maps it into three-dimensional space. So we get right, a picture that that region eventually looks like, well, it can look like something like this, um, say. And I intentionally here highlighted that I've got some mesh lines in the UV coordinates. Those reflect where one or the other variable is constant. So if U is constant, we're looking at these vertical lines, and if V is constant, we're looking at these horizontal lines. And we can kind of track where they get mapped to by looking at mesh functions over here in the target space. All right, kind of you can see that this might be a typical setup um, there. So uh, that's what we're after. So let's just dive in and do a couple of simple examples. Let's start with something fairly basic, like the corrugated roof on the shed here. Now, a disclaimer, we're trying to use fundamental tools of calculus to model the basic features of these surfaces. We're not applying directly for a job at Pixar or Rockstar Games or some fancy animation uh, studio. So the end result that looks something like this will be more than uh, satisfactory here. Okay, so what do we do? Well, in this class, I said there were three kinds of surfaces that you'll be asked to model. Those are graphs of functions, pieces of a sphere, and surfaces of revolution. You might already guess which one uh, this is, but in trying to make that decision, a good idea is to just put down coordinates. Where do you think your coordinate system should live? And then you can reference that and help to help make your decision. So in this case, I'm going to look for symmetries or defining features, and I'm going to stick my origin up at the corner of the roof there, all right? And I'll let Z point up, uh, as usual. And then I gotta put my other axes down, but a sensible idea would be, like, let's have the x-axis run along the roof line uh, there along the ridge. And once we pick those two, it's fairly clear we'll want Y to stick out this way. Right? So now our model of our surface, I mean, in terms of these coordinates, and right? kinda trace it out here. See that, okay, well, it's probably the graph of a function we want, in particular, z as a function of x and y. Now, you want some kind of plotting software to test out your parameterizations and adjust them as necessary. I'll show you the Mathematica commands I use uh, here, but any number of packages uh, can accomplish this. So the relevant command is parametric plot 3D. We see it comes up right away. There, we can call up for a uh, template here that I'll use. And we see the format here, the parentheses are a little weird, but we see three entries for our parameterization, and then you can enter the parameters uh, afterwards. So as I'm going to want z to be a function of x and y, I can immediately make my first two coordinates my parameters, u and v. Right there. Now you see the template only has one parameter here for u. I got to choose a scale uh, here. So u is the x-axis. So let's just make our shed say uh, 10 feet long or under 20 inches. This is what I'm thinking. And I can add the second parameter here for v with the same format. And name the parameter. Give the minimum value. Let's do minus 16. So five feet out one way and five feet out the other to exploit the symmetry. Do note if we only had one parameter we would get a curve and indeed this is the plotting command to, to get a curve. 
Now I'm going to add some options that I know to be useful in this case. Uh, you can copy them or look at the documentation to figure out um, what they do. And, but the real challenge here is to figure out what this function is, right? What function of u and v gives us this roof? And the nice thing about this idea, or mathematics maybe in general, is that we can start with kind of major features, right? To one level of detail, the two parts of this roof are just pieces of a plane. So let's try and capture that um, first. Right? We see that they kind of come in two pieces for positive y and negative y, and it doesn't take too much thinking to say, well, let's just try and make negative absolute value of y our function here. Now remember I just said y, but v is playing the role of the y coordinate here, so I need to write it in ter everything in terms of my parameters u and v. And so let's hold down shift and hit enter and see what this renders, and indeed there we go. Okay, so that just gave us, right, like I said, just the plane, the roof. And maybe we're satisfied with that, but it's unlikely. Like, let's try and at least work in some of this corrugation in here. So how is that going to come in? Well, we can see that we get this undulation in the x direction. Right? As x increases, we see this. So u is playing the role of x here. And the nice thing about functions, we just add values to them, right? The displacement from this plane structure, it's just some oscillating function of u. And let's try sort of the, the simple idea. We'll start up. Let's take good old cosine of u, and I'm just simply adding that function, and we'll see how we do, indeed. All right, that looks pretty decent. There you see, in fact, the mesh lines follow that if we fix v and watch u vary, we get a fixed value for z plus that little cosine wave going in there, and that looks pretty good. For the next example, let's try something iconic, I like the Hershey Kiss here. So as before, we need to decide what kind of surface we want to model this as among our three. And so I'm going to put down some coordinates looking for uh, symmetries here. And I kind of see one right off the bat. If we make the z-axis sort of the central axis of the uh, kiss, we see that we get a lot of radial symmetry uh, around there. In fact, it doesn't really matter where we put x or y once we decide on that z-axis um, here. So pretty clearly, we're going to model this as a surface of revolution. We've got a function that we're going to revolve around the z-axis uh, to get the surface of this object. So the next task is to sketch that curve. Right? So I want you to stretch your imagination here and just imagine only the z-x plane. I'm going to write it. I'm going to put the axes this way. What we're looking for is basically the profile of this can be here. What function describes right, this distance from the z-axis as you go around? And so we just try and sketch something that looks reasonable first. All right, there we go. And so we'll want to figure out a nice equation for that curve, and you can kind of see why I made some choices I did. An interesting choice would be just x is cosine z plus 1, just a shifted cosine function so that that point of tangency comes up right to the z uh, plane there. From here, the procedure is rather rote. We know which axis we want to rotate around, so we set up our param parameterized equations. Z is the axis we're rotating around, so we'll let that be one parameter, right? so that'll be u uh, here. And we know that v is going to fill the role of the angle around z that we sketch out. So all we need to know is what the radius of each circle is. That's given by the function up here, right? x is a function of z. That distance is going to be the radius of each circle moving around the z axis. So that has a familiar formula. We make that the radius and we use cosine of v for the x coordinate and of course sine v for the y coordinate. The last bit though of course is to put some limits on u and v. All right. Now for v is an angle coordinate and we're going all the way around. 0 to 2 pi will do just fine. But u we need to think about. We'll go back to our little sketch up here. And so for a regular old cosine function, right, we know that point of tangency is going to be pi. But we need to go into the negative axis to get this little round extra round bit here, and so this, well, let's just approximate it, right, have it minus pi over 3 
sound. So u is going to be bounded by those values, minus pi over 3. And pi, let's give it a shot. So as before, we'll use parametric pi 3d to get our three-dimensional surface. Here, look for the appropriate template. And let's start with u as the z coordinate. And we've got cos u plus 1, cos v, cos u plus 1, sine v. Here. And just plug in our limits, the minimum and maximum, I'll do minus pi over 3. extra commands saved that are handy and let's see how we do all right so there's our little Hershey kiss that's not doesn't look terrible now of course we can argue about the slopes and whether this is tapered enough and and all those good things but just a first approximation this isn't a bad rendering so there you go I'll leave it up to you to Continue this work. All right. Perhaps you could even add the flag. Or make it wave. Bye for now.